Welcome back to Marvelous Videos, I'm Rylan, and today we will be looking at all the monsters in The Witcher Season 2. Explained. While we all enjoy the intrigue of prophecies and child surprises, fate, and what will Geralt do next, let's be honest, we came to The Witcher for the epic, juicy, certified, gross berserker versus monster splatter fests. No matter how well written and compelling the long arc was, we wouldn't stay unless there was at least a few river of slime, guts on the outside, blood-drenched monster battles. Friends, don't worry, the creative team behind Season 2 is clearly present. Season 2 of The Witcher introduces a slew of new Witchers, and if you're going to have more Witchers, you're gonna need bigger and better monsters to fight. This is certainly the case with The Witcher Season 2, as we are introduced to a number of major threats from the books, as well as some that may surprise you, and they are not to be trifled with. We've got your guide to all the monsters that will appear in Season 2, but be warned, there will be spoilers for Season 2, so if you don't want the fun spoiled, turn away now. We'll go through monsters from the first episode all the way through to the season finale, so buckle up and get ready for a wild ride. Season 2 of The Witcher is based on Andrzej Sapkowski's Blood of Elves, but with far more monsters. So let's take a look at all of them. Before we get into today's video, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks. Now, let's begin. Number 1. Bruxa In the first episode of the new season, we encounter a pretty-looking girl named Verena, who lives in a castle with Geralt's old friend, Nivellen. Right off the bat, it is quite clear that something is not exactly right with her. She climbs walls and all of her ceilings. We also see the mysterious and quite violent disappearances of travelers, as they stopped at an inn near Nivellen's castle. All of this ties together when it's actually revealed that Verena is, in fact, a Bruxa. Nivellen falls in love with Verena, but she murdered the other residents of a nearby town, so Geralt must assassinate her. Fans of the books will enjoy this battle, which includes sequences straight out of the books. One of Geralt's most bruising Season 2 Smackdown is with the Bruxa. Our dear Witcher's vampiric foe is a beautiful woman who sings her way into people's dreams so as to bend them to her will, and who is, in her natural form, a giant bat with huge fangs and nasty talons. <laughs> Her scream has been known to propel large, muscular, and incredibly attractive grown men across courtyards and through stone walls. A Bruxa, unlike others of her kind, can tolerate sunlight. She's undetectable to Witcher medallions and can telepathically communicate with anyone she chooses. According to the Portuguese legend of the Bruxa, they aren't turned by other vampires. They're changed by magic, and unlike Bruxa of the Witcher universe, they're invincible. They are like many other vampiric species in that they can take on multiple animal forms. Rats, ants, and wolves are their alternate forms of choice. They have a particular fondness for the blood of children and enjoy causing havoc with travelers. They worship Satan in their spare time, and their abilities are only active between the hours of midnight and 2 a.m. Iron and steel, as well as garlic, can repel Bruxas. A mother could punish a Bruxa who had harmed her child by boiling the child's clothes and poking it with steel iron needles. The Bruxa would frequently come to the mother begging for mercy which she would grant according to her whims. Either way, they are quite scary, and we all know better than to trust pretty girls who seem perfect. Or do we? Number 2. Nivellen Nivellen is a friendly and charming creature that we come across. It is said that he is Geralt's old friend, and was actually a human contrary to his current appearance. Nivellen looks like a hideous monster with a mane, a bear-like head and large tusk-like teeth who can conjure objects out of thin air. He is charming and hospitable, and even offers both Geralt and Ciri a place to stay for the night. He tells them his story, and we learn that he was cursed by the lion-headed spider cult because he had committed a heinous crime. Turns out that he had entered the temple of the lion-headed spider and he had violated the priestess of the temple and was then cursed to live like a beast forever. He was also cursed with immortality in his hideous form. This priestess cursed me to live like this for they had also told him that his curse would only lift if he found someone to love him truly despite the fact that he was a monster not only in appearance but also on the inside it is only when Geralt kills the woman that Nivellen was in love with that he returns back to his human form and becomes mortal once again it is also seen that the woman that Nivellen had fallen in love with was actually a monster herself called the Bruxa who fed on human blood and he would follow her to feed on him whenever she craved the blood.
Number 3. Wyvern Wyverns are ornithosaurs with snake-like necks and long tails that end in a venomous trident. They are almost entirely covered in dark scales. The creature's menacing teeth allow it to swoop down from the sky, snatch, easily snatching their prey and carrying it off to their nest, regardless of whether it's a sheep or a man. Geralt dismisses the wyvern as a minor nuisance that infests forests in swarms that can be cleared by a single witcher. He explains that they live in dens, enjoy snapping at nethers, and that presenting the head of a wyvern to one's irascible father can cause one mediocre offspring to express pride, which has nothing to do with the wyvern that we saw at the end of episode 8, biting through skulls and spines. While Geralt might dismiss them as minor pests, they are actually quite the notorious creature. Weariness of the two-legged winged serpent may have evolved from the well-founded fear that locals felt when they saw Roman war banners emblazoned with the Vipera approaching. The fact that wyverns are classified as a separate creature rather than a subspecies of dragon in medieval bestiaries may support this theory, as Vipera resemble the bird-legged theropod-footed wyvern with functional wings as forelimbs and a beak much more than dragons. Wyverns have barbed tails as well though experts disagree on them possessing a venomous stinger. Wyverns enjoy circling in the air in search of prey and treasure. Similar to magpies, they will collect anything shiny, from trash to precious metals. According to one theory, wyverns are on the outlook for meteorites. According to some cryptozoologists, a few specimens may even exist in remote wooded areas of Eastern Europe and Russia. I knew something was wrong. I don't know what happened. Number 4. Leshen Leshen are highly intelligent, polymorphic, and iron-resistant hunters, prowling the continent's forests, ready to slaughter humans who dare to enter their domain. Despite the fact that they have a wildcat bear form, they are commonly seen in human suits, or as human-tree hybrids. They can use their roots as lashes or restraints, command nearby animals and plants, and vanish temporarily to confuse intruders. Witches are despised by these creatures. The Leshen is a woodland spirit that controls both flora and fauna and is frequently accompanied by crow murders and wolf packs. In the series, Geralt fights a Leshen twice, but only once does it show control over its own roots. Furthermore, the Leshen he appears to be fighting is mutated, which Geralt does not encounter elsewhere in the series. Despite the fact that the Leshen was mentioned in passing in The Last Wish, Geralt never meets one in the novels. In terms of appearance, Season 2 of The Witcher appears to be inspired by CD Projekt Red's portrayal of the Leshen in The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. While the Leshen can be aggressive in certain circumstances, he is primarily a mischief trickster, and on occasion, a trusted friend to whom the country folk sent their children to be educated, according to Slavic folklore. It's unclear whether the Leshen is a god, a demon, or a tree spirit, and it's possible he's been all three at different times, but he's frequently heard laughing, whistling, and singing in Eastern European and Russian forests. Oleshin in human form, also known as the Old Man of the Forest, is covered in green fur and lacks eyebrows, eyelashes, and right ears. They have pointed heads and skin that resembles tree bark. At any size, the Leshen also casts no shadow. Number 5. Chernobog the games make frequent references to Chernobog runes, but they aren't linked to a specific monster there. We now have a monster associated with it, one that will leave a mark on Geralt in Season 2. Later in the season, the show introduces the Chernobog, which is one of Geralt and Ciri's biggest enemies yet. The Chernobog is a hybrid creature that resembles a human and a dragon. They have large wings and sharp claws. They are also quite large, and the wind created by their wings can knock you down. Apart from being massive in size, it is also definitely a formidable foe because of its vicious attacking abilities. The Chernobog appears in Season 2, Episodes 5 and 6, Turn Your Back and Dear Friend, respectively. The creature was clearly created from the mysterious Stelosite, which had been left over from the Obelisk and had been destroyed outside of Sintra. The creature has demonic wings and has an almost humanoid appearance. Geralt, with Ciri's help, kills it not far from Kaer Morhen. Chernobog is one of the gods of Slavic mythology, and he and his brother Belobog form a divine duo. They're a mysterious duo about whom very little is known, but what is known is filtered through Christian missionaries' lenses. Take it how you want. Belobog, which means white god, is described as having a long white beard. Chernobog, however, is described as coal-colored, and many scholars believe he was one of the church's Satan blueprints. They also believe that the absolute dichotomy into which the brothers have been divided is a later invention, and their pre-Christian cosmology balance was likely more nuanced and subtle. Number 
Number 6. Giant Basilisk Basilisks are among the most frequently mentioned monsters in both the Witcher novels and the video games, created by CD Projekt Red. Although the monster is Draconoid, it is not mentioned in the novels, at the very least, not alive. Geralt appears in Sword of Destiny's short story, The Bounds of Reason, having just killed a basilisk in the Bearfield region. In Season 2 of The Witcher, three basilisks appear, looking more like a cross between a bird and a snake than a dragon with feathers as well as reptilian scales. They have feathered, raptor-like arms, but they have a distinct appearance, different from what the readers and even gamers are used to. Even the Witchers of Kaer Morhen believe it to be out of the ordinary. Basilisks have bird-like beaks and hooked talons, indicating that they are draconoids. This is what a bird, raptor, and dragon would look like if they had a child, but they are still extremely dangerous. They move quickly and clamp down and pierce through any material, especially flesh, their beaks. Their claws also cause damage, and their enormous size makes it quite difficult for the victim to defend themselves against them, though it is possible. The fact that not one but three of them appear in the finale will ensure that it is a must-see episode. Number 7. The Wild Hunt If you see these spectral riders approaching in the Witcher universe, it's usually too late. The end isn't just approaching, it's already arrived. The continent is on fire, and not even Rafia's Geralt, I've lived through a whole dark age and three end of days, can save you. The Wild Hunt, also known as the Wraiths of Morag in Skellige, was widely thought to be a group of spectres galloping through the sky. Common people describe them as a cavalcade of wraiths on undead horses galloping through the sky, signaling the start of a war. They are, in fact, a group of NL elves from Tirnalia, known as the Dir Ruadri in their native elder speech, which translates to the Red Riders. They are led by Eredin Briac Glass, a general who later became king and is known as the King of the Wild Hunt. The true mission was to find and capture slaves from other worlds to serve the Elder Folk. They eventually turned their attention to Ciri because of her elder blood. In our world, things aren't quite so desperate, though I doubt anyone welcomes the Wild Hunt with flowers and parades. Though almost every country in Europe has its own spectral squad, it's likely that the first one was formed in Germanic regions as a way for people to visualize, and thus gain some control over, their two most pressing and urgent fears, death and the violent midwinter storms that made life in the far northern reaches even more precarious during the dark months. Number 8. Myriapod The Myriapod, which has eight legs and sharp protrusions all over them, horns on its head, and massive teeth, is the next monster that Geralt must fight. Despite its size, the Myriapod is incredibly agile, and Geralt will have to pull out all his stops to fend it off. They're also extremely fast, and their faces are a little creepy. When the creature chases after Ciri and corners her, we get a closer look at the creature's face and gnarly teeth, and they're not something we'd ever want to face. The large centipede-like monster is unlike anything that Geralt and Ciri have encountered in the novels. In Sword of Destiny, Geralt encounters a myriapod, or at least a close relative, when he saves Ciri in the Brokilon Forest. Even Geralt, the notorious monster slayer, seems to not know what this creature is or where it has come from, and we can assume that it's been released as a result of all the magical activity that was happening in and around Sintra. The creature in Season 2 of The Witcher is given a lot of creative license. The show adds a blade-like raptorial foreleg and humanoid hands to the upper section of the myriapod in the third episode, What is Lost. The head also has two mouths, each with razor-sharp teeth, which is a far cry from the monstrous insectoid introduced elsewhere. If insects give you the creeps, this gigantic one will definitely cause a shiver to run up your spine when it pursues and attacks Ciri before our favorite Witcher is able to cut its head off. Number 9. Zoogle As Yennefer and Kaer make their way through the sewers, we come across yet another creature. We only see the creature's tentacles emerging from the water, but we've seen an up-close look at its body in the games, and it is pretty gross. They have a large mouth with rows of teeth, and they try to eat their food whole while submerged in the water as shown in the show. The tentacled sewer-dwelling Zoogle was first introduced in Sword of Destiny's A Shard of Ice. Geralt slays one in the sewers of Aid Ginvale, a small town. The bodies of these creatures are bulbous, with sharp teeth and four tentacles. A Zoogle attacks Yennefer and Kerr, as well as their elven company, 
in the Season 2 episode, Redanian Intelligence. Despite the brutal attack and its consequences, Bazoogle is never revealed in the show, with the exception of a brief scene showing a portion of its fish-like body swimming through Oxenfurt's sewers. However, only its tentacles are visible during the attack which is more or less accurate in terms of the novel depiction. Season 3 may reveal its full form, but even as tentacles in the water, it has made quite the impression for this time around. <laughs> Number 10. Voleth Mir Last but not least, we have the horrifying and manipulative Voleth Mir, the main antagonist of The Witcher Season 2. Voleth Mir, also known as the Deathless Mother, is a demon who feeds on suffering. They usually take on the appearance of an elderly human woman, but this depends on the person with whom they're interacting. During the conjunction of the spheres, demons appeared on the continent, but the first witchers were hired to deal with the Voleth Mir, whom they later entombed in her hut beneath the elven ruin in the north. Centuries passed, and everyone except the witchers had forgotten about the imprisoned demon. Despite her enslavement, Voleth Mir was able to communicate with certain people through dreams. Ciri's abilities were revealed when she brought down a monolith during the slaughter of Sintra, which reawakened the ancient demon, who realized the princess screams that the monoliths opened portals into the other spheres, finally allowing Voleth Mir to return home. In 1264, the demon began to visit Francesca Findebar, Fringella Vigo, and Yennefer of Vengerberg in their dreams in an attempt to free her, initially appearing as a different hooded figure in each of them, with Francesca believing it was Ithilene, Fringella believing it was Emperor Emhirvar Emrys, and Yennefer believing it was an unknown person, she was able to persuade them to locate her sealed sarcophagus and recite the incantation to gain access and meet her. They all quickly realized it wasn't who they thought it was, and the demon offered to give them what they deserved. It all comes to a head in the final episode of the season, where the demon takes control of Ciri's body, possessing her, and then proceeds to wreak havoc inside Kaer Morin, before she is finally stopped by all of their joint efforts. And with that, we come to the end of our list. If you haven't watched The Witcher yet, it is streaming right now on Netflix. So, gather your wits, get some snacks, and be prepared to encounter these and much more grisly beasts. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel, if you haven't already, that is. For Marvelous Videos, I'm Rylan. Have a good one, be safe, and thanks for watching.